What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing yet again another overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 5th of April in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that performed very well today that I personally see some potential in over these next couple of weeks. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there watching, if you enjoy the content, you find value in these videos that I upload on YouTube, you can repay me by simply hitting a like on this video. It really supports me and supports the channel in general, and I really do appreciate it if you guys simply hit that like button. And if you guys are new to the channel, feel free to go down below. There are two links, one of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. Both of these are 100% free of charge, and I guarantee you, you will find value in these two communities. And without further ado, let's talk about about what ended up happening today in the overall stock market. So the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded companies ended up closing the day up $13.35, up nearly half a percent, 0.46% to be exact here at the close. Pretty solid day in terms of the S&P 500. The Dow Jones had not as great of a day, but still ended up closing the day green up 0.15 percent up $40.36 at the close here about five, seven minutes ago. And the NASDAQ composite today, guys, ended up closing the day up 0.6%, up $44.50, nearly $45 on the day. So overall, it was a pretty solid day out there and a strong close to the week here in the overall stock market. Now, if we hop back over here to the S&P 500 very quickly so we can do some breakdown so we can understand where we could potentially be headed. Let's just take a look at some support and resistance levels very quickly for everybody out there that's new to the channel because I know a bunch of you guys that have been following for the uh, with the videos for a while. You've heard me say this before, but again, for the new viewers out there, for those maybe that haven't been paying attention to the markets, the 2860 level has been a resistance that we've been keeping an eye on for the S&P 500 here over the past couple of trading days, right? And for those of you guys that can see this chart we've clearly broken or broken rather out of this resistance at 2860 to form another higher high in the SPX right and if we zoom in a bit we can see exactly what I'm talking about right we saw some resistance here at 2860 we got a healthy little pullback a healthy retracement in the S&P 500 down to about 2790 2785 is where we ended up double bottoming here and from there we're up nearly about you know a little bit over 100 points in the S&P 500, and we pushed successfully to yet again another higher high. And if we go to the five-day, five-minute, we've been talking about how the S&P has been consolidating around that 2860 level for a couple of days. Really the beginning of this week, you know, one day, two days here, it popped up, but then we ended up pulling back, retesting that support. It popped up a little bit the day after that, we retested the support. But today is the day we finally ended up gapping up even higher. And really, we've been pushing up to yet again another higher high. We formed that new high today, nearly at $2,900. We almost got there, but it's at about $2,893. And I was actually talking about this in my video yesterday in the previous couple of days about the different scenarios that could have played out here, right? I was talking about how since we were consolidating here on the new resistance, or the new support rather, there were a couple scenarios. The first one was, Okay, we might end up consolidating and then pulling back to see another retracement, maybe another 2-3% drop in the SPX. That obviously didn't happen. The second scenario was, okay, maybe we consolidate for a couple of days, which we did, and then we 
gap up to another higher high. And that's exactly what we ended up seeing, you know, happening today in the S&P 500. So for this week, or this upcoming week rather, let's take a look at some resistance levels that we need to keep an eye on as we get closer and closer here to all-time highs you know, in the S&P 500. So if I were to draw one right here, we can say 2905, which was an old support from back in September of 2018. This is the next resistance for the S&P 500. Another one that you can kind of say is relevant is roughly at about 2885 to 2890, which you can argue we broke out of that resistance today since we did end up closing above it at about 2892. So keep an eye on this level or this range rather on the S&P from about 2890 to about 2905. This is where we're currently hovering in between and where it's looking like we're going to be trading, you know, heading into this next week. And of course, if we if we break 2905, guys, you know, we're going to be headed straight up at that point pretty much. Actually, the next one from there is going to be at around 2915. If we break 2915, you know, that's a straight shot to the all-time highs, which in this case, they're only 40 or rather 50 points it's roughly 48 points away from where we ended up closing today, which is absolutely crazy. And just for fun, let's just take a look and see, you know, in terms of a percentage uh, basis here, how far are we from all time highs? So from about 2893 up to about 2940, guys, we're about 1.5% away from all time highs here in terms of the SPX, which is absolutely crazy. This is literally one strong green day away. I'm talking a very strong green day away from breaking all-time highs and maybe two less strong but still pretty good green days of 0.75% for two days in a row of getting to that all-time high. And let's say next week we have a couple of mini green days like we had today in a row. We're going to be at those all-time highs. But be careful, guys, because the higher and higher we're pushing here, notice how the RSI is getting more and more overextended. And typically over the past couple of months, every time we've pushed to a high, you know, we've seen a little retracement, a little pullback. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see another pullback before testing these levels. Maybe next week, I thought we were going to have a pullback this week. We never ended up getting it, guys. We ended up just getting that consolidation and then the push to the next level, which is really making me think, okay, next week we're going to see potentially a pullback because, again, we're getting more and more overextended. So just keep an eye on those levels and just be cautious about that because, again, we're going to see a pullback whether it is next week, the week after. It's just how, it's just how it works, guys. You know, everything that pushes up aggressively for an, an extended period of time, there's going to be a pullback in that security future future ETF index stock, whatever you're watching, it's going to come. It's just whether, um, or, 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 you know, it's going to come, but the question is when it's going to come, right? That's just what I'm trying to say here. So let's take a look at the Dow Jones industrial average very quickly. Not too much of an eventful day here, right? We ended up closing the day again up 0.15%, but the good news that we talked about in yesterday's video is that we ended up breaking the 26,200 resistance level that has been a strong resistance here over the past couple of months. And we gapped up pretty aggressively. Was that yesterday? Yes, it was yesterday. We broke. We gapped up aggressively to the next resistance, which is at about 26,400-ish. And the good, uh, the good uh, thing that I'm seeing here, the good news is that we broke that resistance as well. And it seems like today, since we really consolidated, we didn't have too crazy of a green day, it seems like we're maintaining that level of old resistance, right? That old resistance level as a new support. And we can clearly see that here on the one day, one minute. Just take a look at this. This is the $26,400 level. And it's crazy, guys. It's literally like it's like laying on that level perfectly exactly on that new support for the entire day and again that's telling me that we've found a new support and now it's either are we going to break the support level next week right or are we going to consolidate a little bit more or are we going to get to the next resistance which is which is about three four hundred points away from where we are right now and quite frankly guys that's going to be putting us 
right near those all-time highs in the Dow. And if I just stretch this out a bit to see how far we are, we're roughly about 1.7, 1.8% away from all-time highs. So keep an eye on those levels, guys. Super, super important for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the NASDAQ here... Very similar to the Dow, we ended up breaking that resistance, we maintained it as a new support, and now we're looking to pop and get to the next resistance, which in this case is at about 76.25. And this is a spot where we actually got to a couple of days ago on the 3rd of April. We ended up pulling back, testing that new support at around $7,500. We bounced on that level perfectly and now it's looking like we want to continue this uptrend retest that 7625 level and if we break that level in the nasdaq guys we're going to be straight shooting to those all-time highs which at this point, they're only about 123 points away from where we are now. So if we had a ridiculously strong green day in the NASDAQ, quite frankly, guys, that would put us right at those all-time highs at about 1.59 to 1.6% away from where we are right now now so keep an eye on this guys tomorrow right or not tomorrow i wish it was tomorrow honestly i wish the markets were open every single day that would make my life a lot more fun but unfortunately the markets are closed on the weekend so on monday is what i'm saying here you know, just be careful about it, right? Because the RSI, again, is extremely, extremely overbought. We've been pushing up now for a matter of a week, a week and a half in terms of the NASDAQ with only one little pullback. So if we do end up breaking this level, let's say we have another green day, you know, just be mindful that, okay, what comes up must come down a little bit, right? We might see a little bit of a retracement here. We might pull back and retest 7,500 again and bring that RSI level down a bit. You know, this is something that I wouldn't be too surprised, I wouldn't be too shocked if this did end up happening. And again, that goes for the S&P 500 as well. And of course, the Dow Jones, because all of these are overbought here on the longer term charts in terms of the 184 hour chart here. So that is the overall market update today, guys. You know, nothing crazy. It was a green day, but... Not the craziest of green days, but still it was a green day. The stocks are continuing to push. Markets are continuing to push. It's absolutely crazy. It still blows my mind how crazily, how much we've been running up here in the year of 2019 alone, being up nearly 20%. Again, it blows my mind, but it makes me happy because... I was buying stocks, you know, throughout the months of October to December, guys. For those of you all that don't recall this, I was buying stocks. And, uh, you know, this is something that has really been, um, you know, benefiting me now in terms of my gains. So let's talk about the little trading update from today. And honestly, guys, I didn't really trade much today. It wasn't too crazy of a trading day, but I actually ended up just taking half of my position, roughly half of my position in Tesla in profit, right? And for those of you guys that don't remember yesterday's video, um, I got into Tesla because we saw how the delivery numbers for Model 3s, they were much less than expected. The 31%, I believe, sales dropped year over year in terms of Tesla. A lot of bad news regarding the company, and that dropped the stock from about $296 down to lows of about $260 at the close of the market yesterday, right? Or not, was it yesterday, the day before? Um, let me just take a look at the five-day, five-minute very quickly. It was, or not the close of the market yesterday, the, the open of the market yesterday is where we were at $260. And I ended up buying shares at $266, $265 roughly here. And I swing traded them into today. Day, right and for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday again this is what I talked about right and if we just hop over here to let's just zoom in a bit actually we can see from 266 up to where we hit highs today at about 276 these shares that I bought were up almost four percent so I actually took 
you know, half of the shares in profit roughly at about 4, not 4%, more like 3.5% today, roughly at about $275. And I did this because I wanted to lock in some profits, but I still wanted to have some exposure to the shares for next week due to the overall pattern that we're seeing here in terms of Tesla. Let me hop back over here and we clearly see, again, the stock pushed up higher today. We talked about how in yesterday's video how the stock really has been maintaining this support level at the bottom of this channel from where we bounced at 291 at $280, 272 These couple of times here, we dipped below it a bit, but we still ended up popping above it here a couple of weeks ago. And that sell-off, again, due to the Model 3 miss, delivery miss, and a lot of other things that happened with Tesla, dropped it all the way back down to that support level, and we ended up bouncing there perfectly yesterday morning. And that led into today trading which popped us even higher and the fact that we really are continuing not really continuing but starting an uptrend here in terms of tesla off of that support i just wanted to maintain some exposure to these shares especially again since the rsi is showing that it's at a decent spot here that big sell-off opened up that margin of profit and ideally here i would want to sell roughly at about 285 dollars which is at about which is about 11 dollars per share higher from where we are right now that is my goal sell position for Tesla. So for the remaining shares of Tesla, my goal right now is really, like I said, to sell at this 180 day simple moving average resistance, really at the top of this downwards um, trending resistance that we have drawn out here. And I know a lot of you guys have watched my videos and have heard me say this. If we break this 180 SMA, if we break the top of this resistance, that's going to be a huge bullish move for Tesla, we could be seeing $300 per share there on a technical basis. But with this bad news surrounding the company, guys, who knows if we do get back there? So I'm going to be being, a, I'm going to be uh, playing it a bit safer here. You know, again, I took my profits on half of the shares, and I do plan on just selling here to be safe and waiting until if we break out of this level to add another position as a swing in Tesla because again that's going to be a break of pattern that's going to be a huge bullish push to the upside I'll see a ton of value in it at that point again this is my opinion please 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 do your own research so that is the trading update here on tesla guys let me know down below did you trade tesla did you end up taking profits did you buy more today are you not even invested or trading tesla at all drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this so let's just go over a couple of other stocks and etfs mostly etfs here that i've been doing absolutely amazing so labu guys is one that i've been watching but i haven't been trading and i haven't really been talking about this one over the past couple of weeks but for those of you guys that don't know this is a biotechnology inverse etf it's inverse is labd and LABU is the bull ETF. It goes up in price whenever SPSIOB, I think it is, or SPSIBI rather, goes up in price. And you can see here, this is the S&P Biotechnology Select Industry Index. And again, LABU goes up whenever this is going up. And we clearly see over the past couple of weeks here, guys, really since that big crash in October to December and the entire stock market, which crashed the biotechnology industry index, this has been recovering very nicely, pushing up higher highs, higher lows, all of that jazz. So LABU has been on an absolute tear. And I'm honestly looking to build a position in LABU, potentially uh, really not a, not a swing position because that would be going against my personal rules of swinging inverse ETFs, leveraged ETFs. But let's say we get a market pullback. This pulls back as well. And we maintain the 50 simple moving average support here. You know, I think that could be a good entry point for a, you know, potential day trade, in and out trade for a couple of days in a row 
for LABU for this upcoming week. Very, very solid there. So crude oil today did absolutely amazing as well. We finally got that pop of about 2%, and we've been talking about how crude oil was pulling back down to that 6130, 6150 level of support, which was an old resistance. We finally got the pullback that we wanted, and we got the pop. I personally didn't trade it, but I know a lot of people in the group traded it and did very well with it. And honestly, guys, you know, this one's looking super bullish, right? We ended up breaking the $62 level. We're at 63 now. So be careful this upcoming week if we get a potential plateau, maybe some consolidation and a little pullback. That's going to be a nice entry in UWT, in my personal opinion, which is an ETF that goes up whenever crude oil is going up. That'll open up a nice opportunity if we do, again, get that little pullback to bring the RSI down a bit to get maybe back in at... If we retest this next uh, support, which is going to be at around $62.80 to $63, keep an eye on those levels. So let's just see some other ones very quickly today, guys. Apple did pretty solid today. Not really good, but it's just maintaining or actually, no, it did break the resistance here at about $195. And now it's looking to pop up to the next resistance at about $200. So be mindful of this one for this upcoming week, a lot of potential there in my personal opinion. Let's take a look at Facebook and see how this one's been playing out, guys. FB, uh, you know, this one, we've been talking about it, how it's been trading in between this channel here, kind of been consolidating and seeing a resistance at about 177, and it's looking like we're pulling back. So maybe it wants to retest roughly 173 to 174 dollars and if we do this could be a nice entry for a swing back up to let's say 177 178 or maybe even 180 dollars this could be a possibility in terms of Facebook so I want to wrap it up here guys I don't want to hold you too long on this Friday but I do want to let you know that on Sundays I'm sure a lot of you guys that have been following me for a while you know this but on Sunday I make a video where I talk about 10 to 15 stocks that I'm personally watching and I actually have you guys comment stocks and I talk about some of those as well on the Friday video. So if you want me to talk about a stock on Sunday's video, simply drop a comment on this video that you're watching, let me know what stock, drop the ticker symbol, and I'll get to it if I personally see potential um, in that stock on Sunday's video. And if you're a part of the Discord group chat, feel free to go to the call out section in there and drop your stock in there, whatever's easier for you, right? Since you're on this video, it's probably easier for you to just comment it here. So do that and I'll get to it if I see potential. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did again feel free to drop a like it really supports me and supports the channel in general feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're new that's that's that red button you see that red button hit that red button guys hit that notification bell while you're at it too. get notified every time that i do make a video i really do appreciate it if you guys do that and again drop a comment let me know your thoughts any ticker symbols you want me to talk about i hope you all did amazing this week good luck next week i'll see you all in a video tomorrow morning pretty interesting video so be in tune for that. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video. Peace out.